In this step, let's get a big picture around the evolution of J2 EE or Java EE or Jakarta EE. There are a wide range of terms which are used to refer to this. Earlier, it was J2 EE. In between, it became Java EE. And today, it's called Jakarta EE. What are all these? Let's get a brief peek into the history right now. In the earlier versions of Java, most of the enterprise capabilities were directly built into JDK, into Java Development Kit, into the Java language. However, over time, they were separated out. They were separated out under the umbrella of J2EE or the Java 2 Platform Enterprise Edition. So things like servlets, things like JSPs, EJBs, all the standards around these were created under a new umbrella called J2EE or the Java 2 Platform Enterprise Edition. These were separated out from the JDK or the Java Development Kit. And over time, J2EE became Java EE. This was a rebranding which was done where J2EE was renamed to Java EE or the Java Platform Enterprise Edition. And over time, it became Jakarta EE. Oracle was the owner of Java EE and Oracle gave Java EE rights to Eclipse Foundation. And Eclipse Foundation connected a pole and they renamed Java EE to Jakarta EE. So what we are talking about is the evolution of Jakarta EE. It started out as J2 EE. The initial versions were 1.2, 1.3, 1.8. And over a period of time, it became Java EE. There were Java EE versions 5, 6, 7, 8. And today, we call it Jakarta EE. There are a lot of versions of Jakarta EE as well. What are the things that are specified as part of Jakarta EE today? Number one is Jakarta Server Pages. Earlier, this was called Java Server Pages. Now, it is called Jakarta Server Pages. This is JSP. JSPs are used to create views in your web applications. Next, Jakarta Standard Tag Library. This was earlier called Java Standard Tag Library or JSTL. And now it's Jakarta Standard Tag Library. These are a set of tag libraries which can be used to show dynamic information in your web pages. You also have EJBs. These are now called Jakarta Enterprise Beans. You also have specifications for how to build a REST web service. This is what is called JAX-RS or Jakarta RESTful Web Services Specification. You also have bean validation specifications, which are part of this. And you also have CDI, Jakarta Context and Dependency Injection Specification. This is the API for dependency injection. The first version of Spring Framework was introduced in 2004. And as Spring Framework got popular, the concept of dependency injection also became really, really popular. And that's where CDI was introduced. This is a specification around how you can do dependency injection. Another important specification is JPA, Jakarta Persistence API. This deals with how you can interact with your relational databases. The great thing is Jakarta EE is now supported by Spring 6 and Spring Boot 3. And that's why you would see that in a lot of classes right now, we are making use of Jakarta.star packages. Earlier, we used to make use of JavaX.star packages. Now we are making use of Jakarta.star packages. You don't really need to understand every bit of what we have discussed in here. At a high level, the important thing that you need to remember is that whether we are talking about J2E or Java EE or Jakarta EE, we are absolutely talking about the same thing. And the important thing to remember about Jakarta EE or J2E or Java EE is that these are just a group of specifications. JSP, JSTL, EJB, CDI and JPA are good examples. As far as Spring Framework 6 is concerned and Spring Boot 3 are concerned, they support Jakarta EE. And that's why we are making use of Jakarta.star packages in most of the examples in this specific course. I'm sure you're having a wonderful time and I'll see you in the next step. I'm sure you had a great time watching this video. Think about this for a minute. What are the different things you should learn to be a great Spring and Spring Boot developer? The fundamentals of Spring Framework, Spring Boot, Hibernate JPA and various Spring modules out there and learning to build variety of applications, a web application, a REST API, maybe a full stack application with React. 
In addition, you'd also want to learn unit testing. And after that, you'd want to learn how to containerize all these kind of applications with Docker. And how about deploying these applications to the cloud? Let's pick up AWS, the number one cloud platform today. Do you think this is a great roadmap for Java learners to follow? What if you can learn all these things in just one course? Yep, that's true. All these in just one course. Wouldn't it be awesome? Wouldn't it be a dream come true? Thousands of learners are already learning from this amazing course. You can join them right now. You can find a link to the course on our website www.in28minutes.com. Keep learning every day. Keep learning in 28 minutes. Until I see you again, here's bye from Ranga at In 28 Minutes.